Yeah. So let's talk about that. So you, uh, so traditional stage, classical stage acting, Shakespearean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, above all, all else, and TV and mm -hmm. film, and then now you're in this CGI world of superheroes. Per, yeah. Uh, and you're you're portraying Dark Side, who has yeah. a crazy cult following. Is that is that a good way to describe it? I would say, yeah. It's 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 a very interesting cult following. That's for sure. Pretty amazing. Really wonderful people. Uh, honestly, but I, I didn't know a lot about the world of comic book fandom until I did this and, uh, uh nicer people you'll never meet. Uh, they're, uh -huh. they're, they're so kind and they, you know, so welcoming, first of all, because okay. when the news broke that it was me, you know, playing the role, I really didn't hear a whole lot of who the F is that guy, you know, it was <laughs> that's more just like, Hey, welcome. Oh, that's um, very cool. And honestly, you know, the world of the comic book villain is about as Shakespearean as it gets. Interesting. You know, all the concatenations and personalities and chain, you know, it's vast. And these people are very schooled. Okay. They know well, what they're, yeah. given me an education for sure. And how did that come about? So you didn't, uh, did you know who Darkseid was before you started this project? I wasn't project, terribly or? familiar with the character. No. I mean, I knew, you know. I knew the general sort of the Justice League. I knew the general, you know, the superheroes in it, but I, I was never, I was never real. I always respected comic books and I respected mm -hmm. people who loved them, but it was never really my thing. Right. Um, Very similar to me. You know, and respect. then I got into this, I got into this film and, you know, Zach decided he wanted me to play this role. And, and, uh, for me, it was just about playing the immediacy of the scene right now, as if it's the first time happening, you know, I can't think in terms of the epic years of, backstory with each of these mm -hmm. characters i just got to play what's happening right now um so i did that and then of course later i've got people asking me you know did you do this because um you know way back here this guy does this this i'm like ah, la, la, la. <laughs> i had to get an education really i wish quick. i could say yes to that uh, and that's and basically i've always just been honest it's like look yeah, i yeah. didn't know when i was doing it but yeah. i'm learning you know uh, that's amazing yeah. and that and for you so for my so i didn't really know about that whole world i mean i know that you know, the, the, the movies and, and that sure. sort of thing. I knew they existed and I watched a few and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had, and then I started seeing this thing because of, because of our friendship, right. this release the Snyder cut thing. And I'm like, yes. That? And it seemed like everybody knew except me what this thing was. And I'm like, <laughs> what is it? And I kept meaning to Google it and research it for like a year. It has been crazy. Uh, and you know, finally I look into it a little bit, but still it's a little confusing. It's like wait, they filmed a movie but then they cut out a whole story yeah, and character that seems, and now there's a whole movie based around what they. Well, what cut happened out? was what happened was you know Zach uh, and his wife Deborah, the producer of the movie, um, they were shooting the film, and um, they have many children, some adopted, and uh, tragically, their daughter Autumn um, ended her life. Uh, Zach and Deborah left the production a little later, uh, and Warner Brothers brought in a completely different director to finish the film, ideally. You know, this is going to be Zach's film. I'm just here finishing it. Well, he, he made some pretty sweeping cuts, and he did a lot of reshoots and a lot of rewrites and things like that, and people weren't happy about it. People felt like it wasn't quite right. Uh, and then rumors started to circulate that there was a Zack Snyder cut of the film and that's where the release the snyder cut movement started was these very committed fans who wanted to see the film that zach had wanted to make and they were very vocal very passionate about it in the midst of it all they managed to link up with the um, american foundation for suicide prevention and they have raised half a million dollars so far for that organization uh, and incredibly passionate and just getting the word out there. And, you know, I knew I had done the part and I knew I'd been cut from the movie, but I, I was still under an NDA. I couldn't say anything. And so I'm watching all this online and I'm like, I, I can't, <laughs> can't say anything, can't say anything, can't say anything. Finally, you know, it was uh, made apparent that it was me. Um, and uh, these people were incredibly welcoming, but I... I mean, I jumped on that cable car as it was passing me at speed. They were already underway years before I was involved. And it's been a real privilege to watch the whole journey of this thing. And it's coming out on HBO Max on uh, Soon. March 18th. March yeah. 18th. So this will come out after that. So it'll be out by the time people listen to this. It'll be out. Oh, and okay. 
Hope yeah, you that's like wild. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's fantastic. Uh, like no, it. that's that's amazing. And so, did it all start with a with a hashtag? Because that's where I saw it first, and I'm like, what yeah. Is this I mean, thing? they they really the they started. I think there was a website. There was a woman in China named Fiona Zheng, who was one of the originators. There are many, but the, one of the originators of it. And she uh, she and a group of other people. There was a web page, I think, and then they got on Twitter, and then they made the hashtag. And uh, under great duress, a lot of people like, no, there's no way it's never going to happen. And they just persevered. They just kept going. Uh, there was a banner at Comic-Con a couple of years ago. There was an airplane with a banner flying around. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, and so they were regarded as like these fringe, like, what are these people kind of thing? And they made it, you know, through their passion and, and just never giving up. Finally, it was HBO Max that looked at them and went, wow, there's something here. We should do this and so they contacted zach and deborah and they did some reshoots and they were able to rebuild the film that they had wanted to see and uh, there we go 